So that we have already done four. So then we are going to do forms we have done only two to be by point to do. How to tell by the animals and the what word. After four, after that we do that here. Next is it. Okay, we are fixed. Show. 
should maintain a distance with the wild animals. Can we cohabit co with the wild animal? We are not as wild as them. Okay. If you go without any uh, our weapons, are you do you stand a chance in front of any of the wild animals? You don't stand a you don't stand a chance. So we can if you carry your weapons and all, then what is going to happen? The wild animal is going to die, isn't it? Or is going to be injured. So I can, can you imagine that unless you there are circumstances when the wild animals from a very young age maybe you know stays in your custody, then you might grow a little and they might become tame. But as wild animals, obviously you cannot go to the den of a tiger and a lion and sit there. You will be its meal in no time, right? So what is the poet trying to say? The poet is also trying to say that they are wild animals and they are best where they are. So one should keep one's distance from the wild animals because we are no match to them. So you should live and let them. So you live yourself, you don't interfere and go and uh, you know, disturb them and let them also not cause any harm to you in that. Uh, have you heard incidents where people have gone to the zoos and what do they not sometimes do? Some children are a little, you know, naughty, um, came in late, be careful. Okay. So what do they do? They feed them. And sometimes they put syrup. Yeah, sometimes what they do, if they can, they try to put their hand outside. Or maybe sometimes, you know, the enclosures of maybe the giraffe or the deer or something. It's not very high. And once uh, I remember, there was this incident in the zoo where the man, he uh, jumped over the enclosure of a tiger. Okay. And they have that, you know, uh, barricade of water. He crossed that and he went into the place where the tiger was. And he was wounded, obviously. And then by the time he knew the tiger came and pounced on him and, uh, and then the zookeeper came and then, but then that is sometimes what happens, they go overboard and they want to go and be near the wild animals and they want to test what is going to happen if they're with them but obviously the consequence is not very good at all. So in one hand, here Carolyn Wells does what? She humorously tells us how we should identify the wild animals and but in a way, she also warns us that these are animals who are beasts of prey and they should be kept at a distance and they should not be meddled. Okay. So that is those seemingly uh, simple the poem is. Let's go through it once. I'll read once and then we will go like that. So start off. If ever you should go by chance to jungles in the east, and if there should to you advance a large and tawny beast, if he roars at you as you're dying, you know it is the Asian lion. Or if sometime when roaming round, a noble wild beast greets you with black stripes on a yellow ground, just notice if he eats you. This simple rule may help you learn the Bengal tiger to discern. Is strolling forth a beast you view, whose height with spots is pepper. As soon as he has leapt on you, you'll know it is the leopard. It'll do no good to roar with pain, he'll only leap and leap again. If when you're walking round your yard, you meet a creature there who hugs you very, very hard, be sure it's a bear. If you have any doubts, I guess, he'll give you just one more caress. Though to distinguish beasts of prey, a novice might non plus, the crocodile you always may tell from the hyena does. Hyenas come with merry smiles, but if they weep, they are crocodiles. The true chameleon is small, a lizard sort of thing. He hasn't any ears at all and not a single wing. If there is nothing on the tree, is the chameleon you see? Okay. So, what are the different, um, you got to tell me, what are the different wild animals the poem is about? Now you are not going to see, now you tell me. Huh. 
Lion. First was what? First was lion. Second was tiger. Third, leopard. Fourth, bear. Crocodile. Crocodile. Tiger. Tiger. Very excellent. Okay. Did you read through? So what are we doing? We are doing how to tell wild animals. So what is the poet saying in the first stanza? She says, if ever you should go by chance to jungles in the east. In the east means? Eastern hemisphere. Okay. Lions are mostly, Asiatic lion is very famous. So lions are mostly found in Asia. In Asia we consider this to the east. Okay. It's an eastern uh, continent. Whereas your North America, South America, Europe, they're all Western continents. So it says by chance, if you happen to go to the forest of the East, then what will happen? And if there should to you advance, what does it mean? If there it should you to advance means? Advance means? Over here, advance means what? Advance means come closer. So, suppose you have gone to the jungles in the east and then you see someone coming towards you. And what is that person's description? A large and tawny beast. Tawny means? What's the color of tawny? What's the color of the lion? Brown. Brown, no? Yes. Not proper, it's light brown. That's light brown. Tawny means light, yellowish to light brown. The color is yellowish to light brown. So it says, if you happen to see a large yellowish light brown uh, coated animal coming towards you, and if he roars at you as you're dying, that means yeah, no, the moment the lion roars, what does one feel like? The man is sure to die. Then you should know what animal is it? It is the Asiatic lion. So how will you tell an Asiatic lion? By the way, by the way it looks, or the color of its eye, that is large and tawny. And second, he has a mighty roar. Okay, everybody is afraid of the roar of the lion. We say of his master's voice. So the lion's roar is something which makes everybody tremble with fear. So when you happen to go to on the forest in the east, and if you see this huge beast which has light yellowish brown coat, and when it when he roars, when you feel that you've already died or you're dying, then you should know it is the Asiatic. Monster is mostly for humans, human form. And beast is, is animal. Monster is uh, huge. The monster is also huge, but monster is uh, has a form of uh, a human and the beast is a form of an animal. Or if sometime, okay, that's our first stanza. Let's see what is the rhyming scheme on the first stanza. If ever you should go by chance to jungles in the east, if they should to you advance, Lord and Tony Beast. A B, A B. What about the lion? If you rose until you're dying, you know you are the Asiatic lion. C D. So the first answer is A B A B C D. Okay, next one. Or if sometime when roaming ground, a noble wild beast greets you with Black stripes on a yellow brown, just notice if he eats you. The simple rule may help you learn the Bengal tiger to discern. So how do you know it's a Bengal tiger? I say, suppose you're moving around the forest. And then there's a noble wild beast reaching. What is this? This is a? Tiger. This is an oxymoron. It's a noble also and it's a wild beast as well. So it's a noble wild beast. It's considered to be uh, because the Bengal tiger is supposed to be very royal and elegant. Okay, so it's a royal, elegant beast. It's, it's a beautiful beast, it's supposed to be. 
and so is considered to be a noble. But however noble, it is ultimately what? It's a wild animal. And what does it have? What is its skin like? With black stripes on a yellow ground. Your ground doesn't mean ground. No, not yellow grass. The color is black on black, or the color is yellow. The height is yellow on that. You have black stripes. Okay, that is called yellow ground. Yellow ground is the the color of the height is yellow. On that you have the black stripes. So Bengal tigers are yellow and black. Just notice if he eats you. So if he eats you, though noble he is, he will in the moment a tiger sees you, the royal Bengal tiger sees you, it's definitely going to eat you. The lion, if the lion is not hungry, the lion doesn't kill. A lion kills only when the lion is hungry. Apart from that, if it is not hungry, if it is satisfied, you you. Uh, the animals can roam around, but the uh, lion is not going to kill. But the tiger will definitely kill. Okay, that is the quality of the tiger. So it says, you, if you come across this wild animal who has this yellow coat and black stripes, and though however noble and elegant it is, if it eats you up, you should know what? That it is a royal Bengal lion. So which part of the year is humorous? Tell me. Which land over here the poet has used humor? The tiger one. Which one? Which land is? Achha, which is land? Yeah, no. That's not the land which picks up the humor. Yes, just notice that if he eats you. If you eat, if you are eaten up only, how will you notice, isn't it? So you in order to notice, you have to be eaten up by the tiger, isn't it? So that's the humor or the fun that the poet has put in over here. And what is the meaning of discern? The Bengal tiger to discern. Discern means to understand or find out. To recognize or understand. So, you will understand that that animal is a royal Bengal tiger only if it has its uh, yellow and black height and when you go near it, it is it's going to eat you. Third one says, if strolling forth a beast you view whose height with spots is pepper, as soon as he has leapt on you, you know it is the leopard. It will do no good to roar with pain. He only lap and lap again. Now see over here, what is uh, what is wrong in this stanza? Achha, did we do the rhyming scheme of the second stanza? Oh. Let's find out the rhyming scheme. A, B, A, B. C, C, no? Learn and discern. C, C. So A, B, A, B, C, C. Is the rhyming scheme of the second stanza. What about, okay, first we'll discuss, then we'll go to the scheme. She say, if you're strolling for, what's the meaning of strolling? Strolling means, think, think, children, put your thinking hands on and tell what's strolling. Evening, you go for a stroll, no? Some people go for a stroll in the evening. Now, walk, but what kind of a walk? A leisurely walk. Okay. Uh, Leisurely walk is called strolling. The morning walk that we do is not strolling, that's brisk walking. Okay. So what you are strolling is, when you are bored with a class and you want to go and fill water, how do you go in the corridor? And, um, so you do like this. So what are you doing? You are strolling. Okay. And leisurely walk in the evening when you, when, you know, aged people or senior citizens, they don't have much, they just go out for a walk with their friends and talk as well. You want to go to also at night after your studies is over, you have friends and you can go for a So say suppose you are strolling around, roaming around here and there, and then you find a beast whose height, height, give me another word for height. Height, give me another word for height. Height? Height, 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 height means Another word for height. The color of the height is yellow. 
skin. Yes, hide this skin. Okay, so skin is spot. Well, spots is pepper. Pepper means it is spotted. Okay. Here and there it is spotted. So if you find a beast who has spots on the skin, and as soon as he has left on you, you know it is a leopard. And how will you know that it is a leopard? The moment you go close to that animal, the animal is going to leap on you. And how much ever you scream and howl in pain, it is going to have no effect on the leopard. The leopard is going to keep leaping on. Right? So that is how you understand that it is a that when you go close to it, first of all, what is the description that this animal has spots on its skin, and when you go close to it, it is going to pounce on you, leap on you, and eat you. Right? Over here, tell me which is the word that has been misspelled. Will. Ah, it will is not misspelled, but it is one word is missing, one alphabet is missing. What is that alphabet missing? The tibble. What is that alphabet missing? It's tibble, no? What should have been? What should it have started with? Uh, it should have started with I know. It will. Okay, so the I is missing over here. So we are directly started with will. It's actually it will. So that is that is called the poet's uh, literary freedom. Okay, there is another word which has been misspelled. Very common, read children. In that sense only. Food. Give me the word. Read, read. Lab. Yes, before lab also there's another word. L. Hmm? L. No. Okay. Read and tell me. Before lab, there is another word. Similar to that. Lab. What is the spelling of lab actually? It's -E L-E-A-P-T. -E and what has been written? L-E-P-T. And the next word that is misspelled is leap. What is it actually? It's leap. But it has been written as leap. So what is this the poet has used? This is called literary freedom. If it is being spelled correct, so they can change the... Why they do it? Just to rhyme. Just for a sense of rhyming, they can, you know, adjust some of the alphabets and make it sound like that. So that is called a, you and I can't do. If you, uh, instead of left, you write L-E-P-T, the teacher will give a circle and a zero. So for that, you have to qualify as a literary person, only then you can have the literary So... Okay, we know how to find out the sun how to recognize the level. Now let's go to the next piece. All right, team. This also A B B C C. View you. Okay, view pepper. View leopard. Okay, A B A B. Pain and again. So C C. A B A B C C. Next. If when you are walking round your yard to meet a creature there who hugs you very, very hard, be sure it's a bear. Have you heard of the term bear hug? What does bear hug mean? A tight hug. Yes, bear hug means a tight, warm hug. It's called a hug. Yes. And the bear is, it might seem, yes, they will crush you. They will hug you so hard that they can crush your bones. So though, yes, so though the bear may look very nice and friendly and you think it's going to give you a warm, nice hug, you may end up with broken ribs. Just see, if you're walking around your yard, just walking around, and you meet a creature there 
who hugs a very very hard we shall it is a bear so how will you recognize a bear a huge one a creature who was willing to hug you if you have any doubts i guess he give you just one more caress caress means one more hug okay so if you are not if you want to be you know more certain that it is a bear he is only going to pamper you and give you another nice round of hug okay and then what will happen to you nobody what is the rhyme scheme caress no it's fine it's not caress you are thinking it is caress it's not caress caress means to stroke lovingly okay that's called caress to pat lovingly or stroke lovingly is called caress when you are walking what is the rhyme scheme yard bear hard bear a b a b c c yes and caress a b a b c c bear ah huh? Bear and bear, and yard hard. Next, though to distinguish beasts of prey, a novice might non plus. The crocodile you always may tell from the hyena thus. Hyenas come with merry smiles, but if they weep, they are crocodiles. Okay, so how do we distinguish between a hyena and a crocodile? It says. do to distinguish beasts of prey means wild animals wild animals are all beasts of prey and especially the which ones the carnivorous ones these are all what animals are we talking about the carnivorous animals so it says that these are beasts of prey so it is so it is to distinguish beasts of prey a novice who is a novice or you think a novice New to something. New to something. That's a novice. Non-plus means confused. Non-plus means means surprised or confused. So this is maybe to a novice it might seem confusing or surprising. But you can easily do it. How can you distinguish between a hyena and a crocodile? The hyena is going to laugh. Have you heard of the hyena laugh? Is laughing like a hyena? Have you heard hyenas laugh? Maybe if you go to you know me in the village side or maybe in the yeah at night you can hear the hyenas. They when the hyenas cry, it's called a hyenas laugh. Okay, so we say the hyenas. Yes. Howling. Yes, they howl, but we say it's the laugh of a hyena. So their faces like that that it seems that is going to give it a give a very uh, hideous kind of a smile. Yeah, they have. We say no, as cunning as a fox, as sly as a fox. So fox, hyena, they're of the size, same sort. So hyenas are supposed to have a very cunning smile on their face. A beak. It means cry. Cry. It means to cry. Weep. They are crocodiles. So if those animals weep, if they cry, if they shed tears, they are called crocodiles. Must have heard crocodile tears. No, don't shed crocodile tears. I am not going to listen to you. Don't shed crocodile tears. Crocodile tears means false tears. Okay, false cry. Sometimes the children they want to get away with things. So they shed crocodile tears, which means false tears. So the poet says, if you find a cunning smile, so Aina. I'm so they are aliens. Aina, ah, uh, yeah, sort of. Aina smile is a cunning smile, a cunning, devious smile. I have heard that there are like hyenas. So how do you find them? Most times they want to do anything. They are about the comments. Sometimes when they when they go away, they find yes. Hyenas are what you know. They are mostly scavengers. 
minus p on leftovers okay so when there is a big piece of prey you know uh, as soon as they uh, hunger is satisfied they just leave the beast and they go away so necessarily they eat up the entire piece so what is left over then is then eaten up by these animals they stay at a at a distance they see that the uh, big animals have eaten and they have gone once they have gone then the hyenas come and they clean up their entire with a pack of they mostly move in packs hyenas foxes wolves they move in packs sort of dogs yes they are group dog family Okay, so that is why if you know that the animal is laughing, then it's a hyena. If the animal is crying, then it is a. What is the rhyming string? Pre, non plus, me plus, a b a b. So I think all of them are a b a b c c. Let's see the first one was not no. Lion, dying and lion. Dying and lion is not the same. So that is a b a b c d. Okay, now let's, let's go to the last one. It says the true chameleon is small, a, a lizard sort of thing, and he hasn't any ears at all. Can you see that picture there? And not a single wing. So this chameleon has neither ears nor wings, but it looks like a lizard. If there is nothing on the tree, is the chameleon you see? So you you know what a chambar? What is a chameleon known for? They change colors and they adapt to the surroundings very well. And we use usually associated with people when when they are disguising when they are disguising or when they change very quickly. Okay, when they change their colors, that is once they they will uh, suppose sometimes I will speak in for for him and sometimes I will speak for for her. Okay, so. New, ha, huh, sort of neutral means I will change sides very quickly. When somebody who changes color very quickly, sometimes one side may be very good, one side may become, you know, completely uh, different. So that's called changing colors. So a person who changes colors, a person who uh, you know changes according to the situation, is called a chameleon. But what is chameleon is actually it belongs to a lizard family, and it can you know change its So when it is sitting on a bar, what is the color of its skin? Brown. Brown. When it is sitting on a leaf, what's the color of it? It is green. If it is on yes, and if it is, and if it is on a branch, maybe. Okay. Okay. So if it if it is on a leaf, then it becomes, or if it's on a twig, then it becomes light brown. So the chameleon can change its color, and so it says that if you cannot see anything on the tree, then you're seeing a chameleon because the chameleon's hide and the bark become same. So you cannot see a chameleon when it is sitting on a on the bark of a tree. It's very difficult to discern it or. Understand. But humans can see only animals. No, no, no. Humans for humans also just want to. You know, you have to be really looking at it. If it moves here and there, only then you can see. It. Sometimes you, uh, sometimes they. If you close the, if you close the eyes, you cannot discern because they will gel very well with the background. You have to be a very good observer to be able to find a chameleon on a. So that is why the poet says, though, if you cannot see anything, then it is a chameleon for sure. So what is the rhyming scheme over here? Okay, small thing, all wing, three C, A B A B C C. So entirely the rhyming scheme is A B A B C C except for the first stanza that is A B A B C D. Okay. All right. Let us find out the other figures of speech. Let's see. From uh, find out alliterations. Alliteration is what? Similar. No. No similar sound. Okay, similar sound. And it has to be in the same line. Alliteration. Remember, it has to be in the same line. Let's find out alliterations.
one day some whisper that the last line of the program. Yes. Yes. It is. It is. That is. It says this is written as. Uh, it is. That is correct. That's an abbreviated form. And leave, leave. First, let us go with the first answer. Do we have any alterations? No. Um. Okay, second one. Roaming round, yes. Exaggeration. Yellow ground. Or if sometimes, no, yellow and brown doesn't matter. Roaming round, both have the R sound. R sound. Then let's go to the next one. We have it in the stanza. Left, left. No. Leave, leave. That's the same word. Yeah. That's a repetition. We call it a repetition. We'll find alliteration in that uh, bare stanza as well. No, it's there in the back of the Yes, what is it? Third one, nothing. Small yard. Small and yard. No. Your yard, you can. Your yard. Uh, your yard, you can. That is. Hugs hard, yes. Hugs hard. Yard and yard. That's it. Novice and non-plus. Novice and non-plus. Novice might not plus. Tell us. No. Novice. The sound is not the same. Novice and non-plus is also not the same sound. Highness and smiles. Who? Yes, for it. Thank you. Okay, that's it. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, the reputations. Okay, let's find the reputations. Why do you start from the third? Go from the beginning. Um, repetition means the same word. Uh, same word repeated. Same word. Twice or twice, yes. Same time. Same time. Yes. You are, you are. Very, very. Very, very, yes. Left, left is there. And very, very is there. Very, very. Very, very other than no? Okay, that's it. Okay, let's check out our uh, volume. Volume number three. Number one. How to tell by that?
So we'll just go through the uh, go through the central idea of the poem and the style. Just read once. One of you can also read.
How is Bengal tiger different from Asian lions? Has black stripes, very huge in size, quite by dangerous, all of the above. Yes, all of the above. What does the word discern mean? Discern? Discern means to recognize. Non class is confused. Recognize and understand. This discern. Which figure of speech is used in the phrase noble wild beast? No? Paradox. Paradox. Paradox means opposite. Read the extract, okay, when you are listening to this. First one. What is the bear most likely to do when he meets you with the young? Be. Embrace Be. tightly. Be. He'll give you just one more caress. Caress here refers to bear's love, bear's play, bear's close and bear's sympathy. Bear's love. Okay, pick the line that you use the poetic device on your page. Which one? E. Who hugs you very, very hard. Yes. Which poetic device has been used in the lion when you're walking around your yard? Alliteration, metaphor, simile, and alliteration. The rhyme scheme of the extract is A, B, A, B, C, C. Fourth one. Choose the option listing the stanza that would follow the given extract. What is this one? Left us stop the sudden pause with the armor of time from the first one. One of the given stanza. That would follow the given stanza. You don't know who to roll with pain, you left and left, and then again. The client was spotted, the leopard in the valley tree kept his ear to carnivorous eyes on me. Then we move fast or try to free his eyes now to get used to see how fast the cat was chasing after me. Leopard stops in silent pause with deadly armor of pines and claws. He lies in his street perch throughout the day, sleeping and resting the hours away. His claws and paws will make him forget if you're in a dream of reality and if you can't go forward, I bet you have to come to a certainty. It's a beast that runs and strikes fast, and you're a thought of the show of the class. Truths to become less, no, definitely not the fourth one. Where is the first? He lies in his class, is correct. Now, his laws and cause will make you forget. His laws and cause will make you forget if you're in a dream of reality and you look out and forward at that. If I can just get to that tall, tall, no. Not a tree, but even if you get to the tall, tall tree, the leopard can climb a tree. So it's not the second one. It's a beast that runs and strikes fast. If you're caught, your shoe sure won't last. This, I think it's maybe one or three. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that is not much of a this thing. I think uh, the third one is better. Pepper pounds a certainty option C. Okay, just make we won't do. Uh, B. B. Do you read just me that you Just me dance with the earth. What is that? For example, I just me does choose the option that currently demonstrates scrolling. Which one B? B. A box in the garden, yes. Relaxing by listening to his favorite song, correct? Which option is the statement that is not true according to the extract? Not true, okay? The poet asks the reader to hide on seeing the leopard. The poet cautions the reader about a leopard when walking through its territory. The poet is not true, okay? The poet informs the reader that the, lion, the leopard can launch repeated attacks. The poet tells the reader that a leopard attack can result in pain. Okay? Cautions the reader about the leopard when walking through its Deadly. No, but it's not given. No, it's not given. The poet asks the reader to hide on seeing the leopard. I think one. 
If it is one, it can be in B also. It is A, yes. And you have to hide on seeing the lap. So the repetition used in heel only lap and lap again is an Multiple example of poetic. Yes. Choose the option that matches with the rhyme scheme of the extract. Hey. Plow, plow, child, by jungle, mingle. Come second one. By jungle, child, mingle, loud, proud. Yes. A, B, A, B, C, C. Why? Why, child, jungle, loud, mingle, loud, loud, proud. Proud, proud. Ah, loud, proud. And then jungle, mingle, C. Why and child. Okay. And then jungle and mingle. And so, A, B, A, B. And, and, and loud and proud is C, C, no? Same sound, no? But uh, in this one also, no? Why one? Child. Why child? Proud, loud. This also can be. Why the proud okay. child? Thought can also be. Second can also be. Thought can also be. It can be the second or third. Both are correct. That is because why and child, proud, loud. So A, B, A, B, and C, C. So both option two and three. Go to discern piece of A, choose the option that does not describe a novice. Lakshmi has played cricket for the first time today. B. Samisha has been teaching for the last 10 years. Yes. No. Krishi no. went to her first French class yesterday. It does not describe. But it does not describe a novice. No. Yes. Then it is the B one. Samisha has been teaching for the last 10 years. So there's not something not new that she's doing. Tell me which one is not a beast of prey. Both one. Elephants. Elephants are arduous. What according to the extract would cause bewilderment? No, it would be birds. No, that is a ox. They are birds of prey. What according to the extract would cause bewilderment? Join the But similarities are their difference, no? And pray on minus? Minus pray on. Knowing the difference between several pieces of pain. That's a C1. Choose the line from the given stanza that the poet takes liberty with to fit the rhyme scheme. Which one? Now this might non plus this. Yes. It's actually not non plus, it's non pulse. He uses the non plus to make the rhyme scheme. Choose the crocodile fact that is related to the given extract. Yes, what too much air gets in that will let you search. Yes, and find out. So let's check it out. Okay. So, from your which uh, short answer time you can do, let's find out. Uh,
all the first six all the six short answer time all the six writing the answers all the six that's the homework okay you come again after five minutes नहीं वो भाई तो मेरी साइड ही लगा है इसी साइड ही लगा है वो तो बात ऐसा है हाँ 